What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel, Hi PSI TV. Today we are going to do a review of the Miller Spectrum 375. It is a plasma cutter that Miller has been building for a few years. Just want to give you my thoughts on it and show you how it works. <laughs> Before we talk about this actual machine, let's talk a little bit about plasma cutting and how it works. Plasma is defined as the fourth state of matter, so you have solid, liquid, gas, and then you have plasma. Basically how this works is it takes an electrical arc and air pressure, and the air pressure is magnified or multiplied as it goes through your cutting nozzle. So you use shop air, you can use nitrogen, you can use oxygen, you can use all sorts of different gases, but shop air is what most people use. And as it comes through the nozzle, it's accelerated, and that with the electrical arc creates plasma. I don't know much more about it than that. I don't really need a better definition than that. All I know is that it cuts metal, and it works really well. So this machine, I've had it for about a week, and I'm using it on my Packard to cut out the floor pans. But today what I'm going to do, I have a piece of scrap metal on the table right here, and I'm going to show you how this works. As far as this machine goes, for the price, so far I love it as far as cutting sheet metal goes. I haven't tried to cut anything thick yet. Um, it's easy to use, it's easy to handle, it's easy to set up. So basically, you plug air into it, set your regulator, plug in the electrical cord, and you're cutting metal. My only complaint about this machine is the ground cord. It's rather thin. Um, I'd like to have something a little bit more heavy duty. I feel like if I were to accidentally, you know, roll something over this, or if I close a door on it, it's going to break. So if they would have done better with this, I'd have been happier. When I bought the machine, it was wired up for 110 volt. It has the ability to be wired up to 20, which is what I've done because I had a problem tripping my 110 breakers here in the shop. So there's a switch on the back. You can switch between 110 or 220 volt. And I haven't used it yet on 220 volt, but we'll see how it does. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to flip on the machine, show you the regulator setting, and then I'm going to hold the torch up in front of the GoPro and show you guys what the plasma torch actually looks like as the... Uh, electrical arc is coming out of the end of the torch. So you can see there's a green pointer here and then two green arrows at the top. You want your regulator set between these two green arrows and as you're cutting you want it above this green pointer here. So I actually have to turn my shop air up a little bit to get this to work correctly which I don't really have a problem with. It's right between 50 and 100 pounds, so say I'm at 75 pounds. I'll show you what the arc looks like real quick. So what you also hear right now is the post flow. Post flow lasts about 15 to 20 seconds, and the reason for that is to help cool the torch after you're done cutting. All right, so a little bit more about the machine. Like I said, this is a Miller Spectrum 375. This is not the Extreme. The Extreme is about half the height. So this isn't really the portable model, which is why I have it on this welding cart. But this machine is capable of cutting up to 3 8 inch thick material. And it's also able to cut 15 inches per minute. On the side here, we have this little storage compartment for your consumables. And like I just said a second ago, this machine is able to do, they label it 115 and 230 volt, and there's a switch inside here that you have to switch, and you have to make your own cord. So I've done that, and I put a welding plug end on the end of it so I can plug my welders in, or the plasma cutter, I don't have to switch out a bunch of stuff. Recommended inlet air pressure range from 80 to 100, max of 120. But so far, super happy with this machine, so let me set up the camera real quick. And I'll do some freehand cuts, and then I'll show you what I've done inside the car as well. All right, so like I said, without getting too technical, that's the plasma cutter. That's how it works. I've been using it mainly for sheet metal. So what I'm going to do is I've been making, you know, just small practice cuts to try to steady my hand. I'm going to set the camera up and finish this cut, and uh, hopefully you guys can see how it works. The unit itself, the fan on it's pretty loud, so you might not be able to hear this too good. But I'm going to make a few cuts here. And then I'll actually go inside the car because I have to do a little bit more cutting and show you guys how it cuts rusty sheet metal. Also, you'll see a lot of guys use sunglasses when they use a plasma cutter. The arc isn't that bright. What I do is I set my helmet to grind and it gives me enough of a shade that I can still see what I'm doing, but it's not hurting my eyes either. And if you guys wear contacts, 
don't plasma cut with contacts in, don't weld with contacts in. Uh, I've heard of people melting their contacts before, so be sure that you always protect your eyes. All right, so I just continued my cut here, and you can see that you get some slag when you use a plasma cutter. That's normal. You're gonna have to clean up your edges. Also on this machine, it has a high frequency start. So some machines you have to actually touch to start your arc. This has a high frequency start, so when you get close enough to metal, it'll make an electrical connection, and then you can start cutting. Also, you do not drag the tip across the metal like this. You want to keep a distance of about the thickness of your material that you're cutting because if you start touching the material what it does is it gums up your tip which you can see this one's been arced on a few times i haven't changed it since i bought it but we'll do a little bit more cutting and then we'll go inside the car Now we're inside the Packard, and as you guys can see, I've got some rusty floorboards, so I've been working on cutting this out. I spent about a half hour on it the other day, just getting a feel for the machine, and I've been trying to be careful about how I cut because there's some floor braces and stuff that I want to leave in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this panel out real quick, just a small piece, uh, so that you guys can see how this cuts through thin metal. Now I'm working on the front floorboard. I have my ground in the back on the... Uh, little X brace that goes behind the rear seat. So let's see how this works with the arc running all the way through the floorboard all the way up to here. All right, so I just cut out that little section of floor. There's a brace back here that I need to watch for. But what I'll eventually do is I'll put my new floor pan in here, mark it, and then you can see what I did on this side. My new floor pan I scribed, and then I came over a quarter of an inch and scribed another line, and that's my cut line. So by the time I clean up this edge, my new floorboard will be able to lay over top of it real quick, and I'll be able to weld it in. So, but you can see where this brace was, it's about, a quarter of an inch thick through here and it cut through it no problem. Like I said, this plasma cutter will do 3 8 So that's going to do it for my quick little review of the Miller plasma cutter, the Spectrum 375. So far, I'm really happy with it. Um, if you guys are looking for something for home use, even if you're looking for shop use, light duty, this is a great machine to work with. And now that I have it hooked up to 220, it's actually cutting a lot better. So if you have the ability, I'd hook it up to 220 and go that route. If you guys have any questions, be sure that you comment below and I'll be sure to answer them for you. And as always, if you guys are new to the channel, I sell merchandise for the channel, High PSI TV. There's always a link in the description below and you can also check me out on Instagram. I'll put my name up here so that you guys can see it. 
For those of you who follow the channel, thanks for tuning in for another video. For those that don't, be sure that you subscribe. I do product reviews, I work on old cars, and I do a lot of performance work as well. So there's something for everyone on this channel. I'll have another one for you guys in a couple of days. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.